fans are making a lot of noise at AT&T Stadium. Anything that moves between these lines, got to get dealt with. Ten, five, and he streaks in. Deep to the post to land, and to five to the goal line. Dallas Cowboys game night is presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. 28-25 for the sixth time in the seven meetings between the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys. The birds get the better of the boys and they do so by three. They were up 28 to six going into the fourth quarter. The final frame friendly to the Cowboys for a moment, but still not enough to make the comeback and complete the victory as the Cowboys now fall to one and two. And there's a lot to fix in this football team. Luckily, we've got Barry Church ready to break down the film and talk about how this team can and improve going into a short week with the New York Giants. But Barry, I know you've had your eyes on this team for a long time. You've been around for quite some time yes, indeed. as an analyst too, not only as a player, but as an analyst, yes, sir. This was one of the worst defensive showings in terms of stopping the football that we've seen in recent memory. Yeah, when you talk about the defensive side of the football, I have a lot of pride in that. That's where the yeah. side of the football that I played in. So when you look at it, especially the running game, to me, that's what my old coordinator, Rob Marinelli, used to say. When you talk about the run game, it's not a scheme. It's not about players or play calling. It's about the one-on-one -on -one opportunities you have to go out there and get the job done. And so far this season, what we've seen from the Dallas Cowboys defense is they're not able to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. It comes down to man-on-man -man right there, shedding your blocks and making plays right there. Each and every one of these individuals, whether it's the defensive line, linebackers, the sec or the second level guys in the secondary coming down for run support, have not been able to win those one-on-one -on -one opportunities out there. You got to get better going forward or guys or, or teams that you play against are going to continue to use that blueprint. Run the ball on this team and uh, basically deflate the defense. Let's take a look at some of the final stats as really this one comes to a close. And I I've got a couple of numbers I want you to take a look at. Okay. How about this one right here? 274 rushing yards allowed by the Baltimore or to the Baltimore Ravens. Mm -hmm. The last time the Cowboys have allowed over 270 yards on the ground. You have to go all the way back to week 13 of 2020. Mm. The last time the Cowboys saw the Ravens. I mean, the rest of these numbers, I mean, this one doesn't look too bad. This one doesn't look too bad. This one is a problem. It's Ridiculous. A and, and there are some times, I guess, whenever you look at it, because they were trying to play from behind, that these numbers will be inflated. But you still can't run the football, and that's a problem moving forward. Yeah, that's a problem going forward. We all understand when you talk about this Dallas Cowboys offense, where are they best? They're best when they have that balanced approach. That's when you can get the most out of the Dak Prescott and this um, passing attack and this offense overall. You've got to have a balanced approach when you're talking about this offense. You got to have more from the ground game. 51 yards is just not going to cut it out there. We know you got CeeDee Lamb on the outside. He's going to get his targets, his receptions. He's going to go out there and ball. But you got to have something to counterbalance that so guys on the other teams just can't pin their ears back and get after Dak Prescott because you're not going to be able to be a, a great team, I think, offensively if you don't have a ground game to go with that passing attack. Well, let's talk about this a little bit more in depth by taking a look at the film because the run defense it may not just be talent it may be a little bit of communication a little bit of scheme and then just guys not doing their job and I want you to outline it in depth when we come back with more Cowboys game night you take a look at the stats here that tells some of the story we're going to give you the whole story in the 28-25 loss to Baltimore right after this. This segment is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Dallas Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. All right, here we go, Barry Church. Time to take it to the film room to try and figure out what happened in the Cowboys lost 28-25 to the Baltimore Ravens. 274 yards on the ground. I want to take a look at the two touchdown grabs okay. or two touchdown runs, I should say, early in the game, starting with the opening touchdown drive for the Baltimore Ravens. They get a stop on defense, immediately drive down the field, and they did so with ease. Mm. This is how they capped it off. What happened on the read option? Well, Kyle, I want you to keep your eyes on this man right here, the young lion, Micah Parsons right here. We've known that when teams want to isolate him, what they're going to do is do a lot with your eyes. They're going to have you looking this way, looking that way, because you know Micah Parsons. If he has a straight line at somebody, he's going to destroy them. So as we let the play go a little bit right here, we'll see him line up right here getting ready. All right, let's pause it right there. 
his vision right now should be solely on Lamar Jackson. But as you see in this, he has so much coming at him. He has Mark Andrews going this way. He has Isaiah Likely coming out this way. He has the run action from Lamar Jack or from uh, Derrick, Derrick Henry, Henry as yeah. well. So that might confuse the guy a little bit. But when you're going against the read option look, you got to focus on your responsibilities. Pause it right there. And his responsibility solely has got to be Lamar Jackson in this situation. But as you see the vision going right here, he's looking at Likely. He's looking at the dive from Derrick Henry. He's not focused on all that speed and all that space up here that Lamar Jackson has to play with. So when you're going against a read option look like that, you got to focus on what your responsibilities are and what you have to do. Let's pause it right there. All right. As you see the foot placement right here, he already paused it. He's already losing right there because as a, as a defensive end, there's no defensive end in the National Football League, in my opinion, that can run with this man Lamar Jackson right there. None at all. Once you lose that responsibility, use that edge. Let's pause it right there. You see here, Isaiah Luckley has a great block and a great angle on Overshone right there. Right here, uh, Parsons, he's already had lost contain. His job is done. He missed up his job. His, his job is gone right there. You look at Overshone, he has to be able to beat that block from Luckley, get over the top, and at least bring Lamar Jackson back to where all his help is coming from. He does not do that. Lamar Jackson is one of the fastest players in the National Football League. And if you give him all that green grass up here, he's going to eat it up and get into the end zone. You have to do a better job at defending the read option. And it comes down to focusing on your responsibilities and trusting that your teammates are going to do theirs as well. I want to re reverse this a little bit and okay, ask a, a, a bit of a follow up question here because okay. It, we've talked about two tight end sets, right? You've yes, got two tight ends here. You've got one at the end of the line of scrimmage. We're not going to be able to highlight it there, but you've got one with Mark Andrews here. Mm -hmm. You've got one with Isaiah Likely here. Both guys are very good whenever it comes to blocking. Yes, they are. Yes, but then you've are. got Trayvon Diggs trying to help keep contain on the outside. He's washed out entirely. How important is it from a defensive back standpoint? I know we just talked about the linebackers mm -hmm. and their job, but from a defensive back to try and keep that edge because he didn't do so on this occasion. Yeah, as a defensive back, you are the last line of defense. I know the scheme is for, you know, Micah Parsons to be able to keep the edge up there yeah. or maybe an overshone to get over top and be able to keep the edge right there. But in an all world, everything's not going to be perfect. So as a defensive back, as a corner, you've got to understand that and you've got to have your eyes in the right location. When you look at a guy like um, Diggs right here. He has his vision at the end man of the line of scrimmage, which is a good start right there. But as we play the play a little bit right here, as we go, you see him. He has his eyes right there. He's not outside. Let's pause it right there. Mm. Hey, look at the vision right there. You haven't defeated the block. First, you got to get what you, your responsibilities first, which is defeating that block. You have to get over top right there. Mark Andrews is a big man. All right. What you cannot do is let him get inside and get his hands all in your in your basically your chest plate right there and have you held to you. It's just not going to work. The physics are not there. Mark Andrews is a bigger man. He's going to be able to drive you back. The, the problem here with uh, Diggs is he's got to be able to go over the top and he's got to be able to make sure that he able that he's able to get around Mark Andrews in that situation. You got to keep that outside arm free. He's not able to do that. Mark Andrews pins him in there and as we uh. see the contain is gone and like we said from the beginning once you give Lamar Jackson all <laughs> this green grass all that speed he's going to eat it alive and be able to get into the end zone with ease. So to me this came down to one thing, not doing your responsibilities and making sure you contain a guy like Lamar Jackson, which his defense was not able to do on that play. And, of course, his speed is unmatched. You mentioned yes. it. There might be only one linebacker that has a shot mm -hmm. at catching Lamar Jackson, and it's the guy that's about 10 yards right back there. from right here. He's a 4-3 guy. All right, this guy right there, he's a 4-3 guy, and he's still he's not different. able to hang with Lamar Jackson on turf. It's a different story, my friend. Different speed. There is a different level of power in the backfield of that Ravens yes, indeed. secondary and what they can bring from a running back standpoint because Derrick Henry is nasty. <sighs> when we come back, I want to talk about when you get him going, he's tough to bring down. Oh, man, I You've know. had to try it a couple oh, times <laughs> in your career. More Cowboys game night right after this. This segment was brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Dallas Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. Welcome back in to Cowboys game night alongside former safety Barry Church. I'm Kyle Yeomans taking a look at the run defense from the Dallas Cowboys. They give up a couple touchdowns to Derrick Henry. This was one of them from okay. 26 yards out. What happened on this play? Well, Kyle, I want you to keep your eye on the center for the Baltimore Ravens as well as the guard for the Baltimore Ravens. Tyler right Linderbaum center and Daniel Falele is the right guard. Yeah, so I had to talk to our big dog Nate Newton out there. And he was <laughs> trying to tell me what type of block this could be. And what it is is what he called a deuce block. It's when these two individuals right there 
double team on the nose guard right there. And then the center, Linderbaum, likes to work his way up and go against the, whatever linebacker or safety, whoever's coming down next in that hole to pick them off as well. So let's go ahead and run the play a little bit here as we see. Boom, let's pause it right here. Both of these guys come off on the block on the double team. I believe that's Mozzie Smith right there. Yes, it so is. So they're able to double team and get him worked off of the ball a little bit. So as we run it a little bit more, we see Linderbaum come off right here and have a great seal block on Kendricks right there. That's exactly what that play is designed to do, to push Kendrick past the hole. And then as we see uh, King Henry with his great vision that he has right there, is able to snake his way into the second level. Now, when he gets to the second level, he's like the juggernaut, all right? He's extremely hard to break down. Let's go ahead and pause it right about here. As we see the vision from a hole safety, this is one of the hardest tackles in the National Football League, all right? You're one-on-one -on -one with a guy like Kim Henry. You got to keep your eyes on the target, all right? Mm. You can't put your eyes down because you're going to miss what you're hitting out there. Yeah. And as my old coach used to say, you've got to keep or come up with a body part right here. We see right here Wilson whiffs on the plate, does not come up with a body part. Derrick Henry is able to keep his balance. Let's pause it right here. Once again, Diggs is in a situation where he's the last line of defense. He has to be able to cover all that space out there. He's not able to do so, okay? He does not keep that. Let's pause it right here. He does not keep that outside arm free. He's leaving that can tend. You have all your help coming from this angle right here. All your help is coming from inside. You've got to be able to seal that off and force King Henry to get back upfield this way so your help can come and rally the tackle. He was not able to do that. King Henry was able to use his speed, get around Diggs in this situation. There might be a little hole right there, but the rest are not <laughs> going to call that at all. Diggs slightly made a business decision because you got to be able to get off of that block and contain a guy like King Henry right there. It takes all 11 guys to get the job done right there. If the first level of defense doesn't work, the second level of defense doesn't work, you got to keep the contain because all your troops are coming from inside out. And that's a perfect example of what happens when you do not keep contain on a guy like King Henry. Two questions for Let's you. Let's do it. One, did this bring back any bad memories oh, oh of a goodness. safety having to step up like Donovan Wilson in this occasion, stepping up to make a tackle of Derrick Henry? I'm sure it probably did. Oh, it did because Derrick Henry, I mean, he's done me bad a lot of times. <laughs> a lot worse than what happened with Donovan Wilson right here. But that's why you get paid the big bucks. You've yeah. got to be able to bring guys like Derrick Henry down in the open field. It's all about your vision. You don't have to blow guys up each and every time. Keep your eyes up and keep your eyes on your target and at the worst, come up with a body part. If it's a shoelace, a toenail, whatever you need to do to bring him down and realize that this play is done. And the second question is, yes, for Eric Kendricks, he's trying to, as we back it up a okay. little bit here, he's trying to scrape over the top of these offensive linemen and plug that gap, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. I mean, at this point, he's just sealed off. Is there anything else that Kendricks can do here, or is it just that good of a block from Linderbaum? See, it's a great block from Linderbaum, but where I'm looking at right here is my guy Overshone right here. Ah, okay. This is another opportunity where we talk about shedding blocks and getting off of blocks and being able to fill this hole right here. All right, we understand that King Henry has the cutback right there. This is where we need Overshone to get off of that block, come downhill, and at least get some support in there to slow King Henry down. We talked about it in the pregame. The way to get this guy stopped is you got to make him stop his feet before he gets going. Isaiah loves to call him the juggernaut, and that's exactly <laughs> what he is. Once he gets rolling, it's almost impossible to stop. That's another example where these guys have to get these one-on-one -on -one opportunities, shed blocks, get off blocks, and get downhill and make plays. That's another opportunity missed for the Dallas Cowboys defense. And it was one of many, and they also had some struggles trying to slow down the passing attack yes, as well. That's what we'll talk about when we come back. More breakdown from the 28-25 loss from the Cowboys to the Baltimore Ravens in week three of the NFL season. To watch more Dallas Cowboys content on your connected TV, download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. Closed captioning is brought to you by the Texas Lottery. Cowboys scratch tickets from the Texas Lottery are here. Play today. In the first half, it really wasn't pretty for the Cowboys in any level of the imagination. One good thing is that they only allowed one touchdown in the second half, and they figured some things out. But I want to take a look at one of the okay. earlier scores as Rashad Bateman found his way open in the end zone. Already in the red zone, they were running the football at ease. What happened in the breakdown on the secondary here that allowed for a wide open touchdown? Well, this was a filthy route by Bateman, which you have in a slot right here. He runs one of the nastiest banana sevens that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but let's go ahead and 
second breakdown. What I want you to take a look at right here, these guys, the Cowboys, they're in cover three. Mitching, meaning this gentleman right here, Overshawn, Kendricks, and uh, uh, Jordan Lewis out there are responsible for the hook area. And then you look at a guy right here in Diggs, he's responsible for that deep third. You got um, Donovan Wilson, he's responsible for the middle deep third. All right, as we run the play a little bit here, you see that Diggs opens up. Let's pause it right here. Isaiah Likely, which is the only third that that side of the field that Diggs has or has his uh, his eyes on and has responsibility is, is blocked. So he becomes basically a free player right there, and that's going to come back to haunt this defense as we go later on to the play. As we see the hook defenders right here, Overshone and Kendricks in their responsibility, layering that defense right there. Let's go ahead and play it. As we see Bateman right here, he starts to come over on this play and then does a nasty banana seven mm. on the middle of the field safety, which is Donovan Wilson right there. Let's pause it right there. One thing I have to point out, Wilson's eyes are in a terrible spot right there. You got to understand that right here, Bateman is the only threat that you have. So you got to keep your eyes on Bateman. But you also have help in that deep third, and that's Diggs right there, who has that third if Bateman were to continue right there. So what Wilson did right here was he jumped the route. He jumped the route thinking he could go ahead and cut the over. And what Bateman did was hit him with a banana seven, went back to the seventh post, and there's no one there right now. That's the third where Wilson was supposed to handle because he had help, but he didn't use his help right there. He went and jumped the, the uh, over route, and Bateman hit him with a banana seven, which is deadly against cover three in the red zone. And that's tough because the timing here was perfect. It was. It was from perfect. From Lamar Jackson and Bateman as well because Donovan Wilson may have had a shot to catch up to him if his eyes were in the right spot. Yes. But at the same time, with a route like that and the bootleg out to the right as well from it Lamar Jackson, the, the way that this was drawn up, it's just a phenomenal play call. Yes. But bad eyes. I mean, we talked about it already with the run defense. Mm -hmm. You've got bad eyes now in the secondary in the passing game. How do you fix something like that, especially in the short week going in up against the New York Giants? That's why, in my opinion, you got to know your defense like the back of your hand. When he saw that nub defender or that nub tight end that we saw Isaiah likely block, he should have automatically clicked in his mind, hey, we, I have an extra defender over here in digs that can help me on any over route coming over. So I don't want to hesitate or I don't want to go ahead and jump that over knowing I got digs right there to help me out. He should have seen that from the beginning you know the defense know exactly where your help is and that'll help you a lot going forward in that cover three red zone oh man lots of things to clean up on this yes. defense yes, we indeed. hit it run defense passing defense in the red zone I mean a lot of things to clean up and not a whole lot of time to do it for Mike Zimmer and company as they have Malik neighbors who's been on a tear He's a beast. the New York Giants going up against this defense on Thursday when we come back we tie a bow on this one take a look at the short week ahead with more Cowboys game now. Dallas Cowboys game night was presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T Stadium hasn't been friendly to the Cowboys as of late, but they will go on the road following this 28-25 loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Week three in the books. It's on to week four, and we quickly turn the page because it's Thursday night football first short week of the year for the Cowboys alongside Barry Church. He just broke down some phenomenal tape looking at what this Cowboys team is going to look for going into this weekend. But there's three different phases of this football game yes. that need to get better. We talked a lot of defense. What do you want to see better on the offensive side? I want to see there's some positives that they can perform on, but I want to see uh, Dak Prescott continue to get those other pieces involved. You know, CeeDee Lamb's going to get his. He's going to be able to eat out there. But I want to see Tolbert. I want to see those guys be able to step up and get the job done. They started a good time this week. Now, there's a way for you to get better as this game goes along and the season goes along. Mm. There's a lot of excitement around really the, the fact that there's still a long way to yes, go, right? Yes. I mean, you're one and two, but you can get back to 500 this week. How important is it to put this one behind you and not allow the Ravens and even the Saints to beat you two or three times down the road. Well, good thing it's a short week, so you're going to burn the tape that you saw from this Baltimore Ravens <laughs> game. But it's a short week. You got an NFC East divisional opponent. Luckily, you've been able to own the Giants. You got to move forward and get after these guys and go ahead and get you another NFC East win. Offensively, defensively, you got to play better, but you do got a great weapon on the special teams in Aubrey. Mm -hmm. Once you cross that 50 yard line, he's automatic points. So that's one positive to point out from this Dallas Cowboys loss. That's one positive, maybe one of the very few positives. <laughs> yes, indeed. But but you did find some rhythm offensively down the stretch. Keep that momentum going, and you might be okay going into that Thursday night football matchup. Be sure to download the Cowboys Connected TV app, Cowboys Now app, so you can see more of Barry Church film breakdown as the week goes on. For our entire Dallas Cowboys crew, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next week.